Good evening, everyone. It is 6.30, and I thank you guys so much for coming and being a part of this this evening. Uh, my name is Dan Lentz. I'm one of the principals of the high school, and with me tonight is Mr. Ben O'Connor, and uh, uh, Ben is going to do the majority of tonight's presentation. I just wanted to kind of say hello and, and uh, say a few things before we get started. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming on tonight. And if any of uh, your friends or anyone at home um, is uh, interested, we are recording all of our sessions tonight. Uh, give me a week or so, and we hope to have all of those back up, and it'll be on the um, that eighth grade orientation website that was listed in the email that you received, and you'll be able to come back to those. So if there's anything that, um, as, you, if you have any questions tonight, we will do our best to answer them later. Um, but if you do have any questions tonight, uh, you'll be able to come back to this presentation as well. Uh, Mr. O'Connor, if you'll go ahead and, and go to the next slide. So the purpose of tonight is um, pretty much just about scheduling. We want to help you start to think about your child's freshman year as well as all four years. And we want to help you know how the, what the process is for selecting their courses. We want to help you start thinking about graduation, meeting those graduation requirements, um, and also thinking about what courses uh, within each of the different um, departments that we have. So here in just a second, um, I'm going to show you something. I, I hope that it's, uh, it's easy uh, to understand. Um, Mr. O'Connor, if you would stop presenting, I'm going to try to present that one page, and I'm hoping this works. If everyone will please bear with me here. Um, I'm hoping this, this will work. Ben, can you guys see that? I, we, Mr. O'Connor, is this working for everyone? It says you're presenting. I don't know if anyone else can see it, though. We yeah, can I see it. Can you guys see? Okay. So we can I, wanted see. Sure that, I wanted to make sure that um, everyone understood how to use this uh, link on this spreadsheet. Uh, starting at 715, all of our different teachers from our different departments are going to be available. And you can see the departments listed here on the left, art, business, educational support, and so forth. And then you can see the time frames across the top. You're, uh, you're going to be able to select your own uh, schedule. So, for example, if your student is interested in band, then at 7.15, you can click this link right here, and Mr. Murray, our, uh, or pardon me, uh, Mr. Lesnick, our band director, will be at that link, and from 7.15 to 7.25, he's going to do a short presentation about all the different options, not only in the ninth grade, but for all four years, respective to band, and then hopefully have just enough time to answer a handful of questions. Then if it's 7.30, you are interested in potentially just determining which English course your child would like to take in their freshman year. Then if you click on this link right here at 7.30, then uh, Mrs. Green and Mrs. Polziak, you'll see the names of the teachers on the far right. Mrs. Green and Mrs. Polziak will be available. So whichever department you're interested in, there will be six time frames. Just follow the times across the top, the departments down the side, and kind of where they meet in the middle. That will be the link that will take you to that presentation. We are going to obviously try to stay very uh, close to that schedule. Those teachers will be available, and if you're unable to get your questions answered, their emails are listed at the far right. You can email any questions that you might have to them uh, respective to scheduling for next year, okay? So I hope that makes sense. That link is in uh, both the website and the mailing that you've received, and uh, that will be what happens from 7.15 on after Mr. O'Connor is, uh, is, is through, okay? So I hope that made sense. Um, Mr. O'Connor, if you'd go back and uh, put the PowerPoint presentation back up. A few people had wrote that they're unable to log in or, or get into the meeting because it's full. I don't know if you were able to add more people on your end. I am not at this time, um, but as soon as I leave, we can. I think a few people will be able to get in, so um, I'm very sorry. So. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. 
So, um, again, that's what tonight is all about. There's the link, and these sessions will eventually show up there. Um, we also have for you, if you click on any of these links, our overall course description guide is listed there as well. Uh, that will have all of our courses for the entire high school. And then each department at the very bottom of that page, each department has handouts, and those handouts will be available to you as well. Okay? And all those handouts are, are to help you with the scheduling piece. All right? Um, one thing that might be somewhat new to you might be uh, talking about keystones. Uh, our keystones are the state tests. They're not PSSAs at the high school. They're the keystones, and there are three of them. Uh, being proficient on those are graduation requirements, but I want to make sure that everyone knows we have not had anyone not get in uh, to uh, not graduate because of these. We've got systems in place to make sure everyone gets through. They are end of course exams, and what I mean by that is at the end of biology, they take the biology keystone. At the end of 10th grade English, they take the literature keystone. Some of your students have either already taken the Algebra One keystone or will probably do that this coming May uh, at, at Dorseyville. Um, and if they are coming in from um, uh, another school or another district, uh, we typically will do that again at the end of Algebra Two. Okay? Go ahead, Mr. O'Connor. Uh, another thing, and this is just a, a highlight of this. Uh, but another thing that all of these things list here, we just have a ton of support services uh, and a ton of what we call safety nets at the high school. Uh, be that mental health, be that academic support services, or whatever the case might be. Uh, there, this is not an exhaust, exhaustive list by any means, but all of these different um, uh, things that we have listed is just an example of all of the different support services that we have to try to make sure that your children are successful. So never hesitate to call either myself, one of the principals, or one of your guidance counselors uh, as well. Okay? Uh, and the one thing that I just kind of wanted to mention to you is, uh, as I'm sure you expect, uh, college is a little more difficult than high school. Likewise, high school is a little more difficult than middle school. Um, and so there's that increase starting next year in academic rigor. There's an increase next year in accountability. Uh, our high school teachers do expect things to be handed in on time. There's due dates and they're expected to be handed in on time. Student responsibility as well. Uh, an increase in self-advocacy where the students start to ask for help and come see their teachers during the design times that we have available. As well as we're doing a lot of this for post-secondary preparation as well. So if you notice just a little bit of an escalation next year, please know that that is intentional, it is natural, and uh, next year is supposed to be, uh, you know, it's high school and it is supposed to be a little bit harder than maybe some of the experiences that they've had at middle school. Okay, next slide. So our counselors are assigned by your child's last name. You can see the names of those counselors there, and you can see the breakdown of the alphabet that they serve. Those of you who are fortunate enough to have a last name between P through S, you get this fine gentleman right here, Mr. Ben O'Connor. Uh, Mr. O'Connor is gonna take it from here, and he is going to uh, do the, uh, the rest of this uh, presentation. And again, it's gonna be focused uh, solely on um, uh, scheduling for the freshman year and how to pick courses and think about the four years. So, Mr. O'Connor, I'm going to step off so at least someone else can get back on. And uh, my um, my thank you, my my thanks for joining tonight. And um, uh, take it from there, Mr. O'Connor. All right. So, welcome everybody tonight. I'm going to do my best over the next 20 to 25 minutes and just explaining the whole scheduling process and how to get your son or daughter ready for next year. It's a nerve wracking time. It's an anxious time for obvious reasons. But as you try to prepare your son or daughter for high school, we want to help them get the best schedule they possibly can and schedule for the next four years um, to lead them to whatever they might want to do after they graduate from high school. Um, it's a unique time for me as a parent because I have a child who's in eighth grade. And um, for the first time in my life, I'm where you are as well. And nervous would be um, the word to say the least. Um, what, what I will say is there's a great staff of counselors here at the high school. 
And whether your son or daughter has Mr. McClister, Mr. Baxter, Mr. Como, Mrs. Papalia, Mrs. Mackin, or myself, we work really well together and we do love our jobs. And uh, we want um, your child to have the best experience possible when they come to high school. So some things to think in mind that when we meet with your children to schedule, um, we always have our graduation requirements. This slide that's up now. They have to take, take and pass four credits of English, four of social studies. We hope they take more than three in science and math, but they only need three um, in science and math to graduate. Um, a recent change, if you had an older child that graduated from the high school in years past, um, you no longer need to take and pass phys ed all four years. You need to take it for three years and pass it. Um, so one and a half credits towards graduation is toward physical, physical education. They will have to take health as a freshman and a sophomore. Both of those are a half credit and a total of one credit. Um, the one change, the reason why it's a less, um, one less year of physical education is there's a career and college essentials class that everyone will have to take as a junior. It's a great class that gets the children prepared in resume writing, job interview skills, college application um, writing, job application writing, uh, financial aid research, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's nine additional credits to that. And Mr. Uh, Dr. Lentz was just talking about the Keystone exams. There is one credit in the Keystone exams for a total of 27 credits to graduate. 26 of those are academic. Um, to also to graduate, your son or daughter will have to pass 12 hours of service learning, which can be done at any point once they reach the high school. And 12 hours, to be honest, is really nothing. Um, it's just a couple afternoons of, of giving up their time for good of the community. So when we meet um, with your son or daughter, we look at a four-year course planning worksheet. So from ninth grade all the way through 12th grade, we want to make sure they get that credit in English, the credit in history. And you can see as time goes on, the, the history class will change. And they could be honors or AP as they get older, um, but they do need that English or history. The math and science technically after their junior year, they're done with the graduation requirements for Fox Chapel. Um, we will try to um, get them to sign up for one their senior year, but they don't have to. And you'll see the phys ed requirements are there, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Health is there, freshman, and sophomore year. And um, for their junior year, there is that career and college essentials class that I talked about earlier. So report cards are important. However, when your son or daughter leaves high school, it is the transcript that is the most important thing that goes with them. Only parents, counselors, teachers, um, and of course the students will see the report cards, but it is the final grade that matters. This is just an example of a student that graduated a couple years ago. We of course whited out their information, um, but as you'll see as the transcript moves along between ninth to 12th grade, the final grades, the percentage and the letter grade are there, the credits, what semester they took it, of course, the, the, the course name is there, demographic information, and then there's a running tally of attendance, tardies, grade point average, and if your child chooses to when they apply to college, we can also list their SAT or ACT scores at the bottom. So if first semester or first report card period of their freshman year doesn't go so great and the grades aren't what they should be, Nobody will see it, nobody meaning colleges or, you know, the armed services or whatnot, but it's only the final grades that stick with them forever. So it, at some point, um, you'll see a ninth grade course selection sheet. This is basically just a guide. Um, it is a sheet that the students should use to meet with their counselor down at the middle school to upload all of their classes into PowerSchool, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, Mr. or Dr. Lentz talked about a course description guide, which is available on our website, and that link is there. But there's a hard book as well that would be passed out um, here pretty soon. But they can go through and see all the different classes that we have to offer, course uh, the, the description of the courses, and who it's available to. Now, we work through PowerSchool, and when your child is going to schedule, they do have to go into the um, Power Scheduler, and there is a link for class registration. And when they go on there, um, they will select what classes are available to them. Um, between the counselors and the teachers and your child, that they will be able to go through and they'll pick the classes that are 
you know, that they meet the prerequisites for. In each class, like for example, up on the screen is US history, whether they meet the prerequisites for the accelerated um, or not will be up on there. Um, and speaking of history, so English and US history options for next year. Um, it's kind of easy for English or history. Either you'll take the academic or English nine or US history or the honors level, which we call accelerated. English nine accelerated, for example, um, to, to meet the prerequisite to take that course, you do need a 90% in eighth grade language arts or a teacher recommendation. And the same goes for the US history accelerated class, a 90% in social studies eighth grade or a teacher recommendation. To take the academic classes, you simply just need to pass language arts eight or social studies eight. Math is the one that we really definitely wanna work hard to get right. Um, students that are in, <clears throat> or want to take integrated algebra one, they basically just need to finish math eight. The algebra one academic class, they will need an 83% or higher in the math eight class or a teacher and or a teacher recommendation. Um, there is a geometry accelerated class that is available for the students who have taken algebra one in eighth grade. And you do need to have got, um, received an 83% in algebra one accelerated in eighth grade. There's the Algebra 2 Accelerated, which will be for students who got an 83% in both Algebra 1 Accelerated and Geometry Accelerated. We also have Computer Science AP as a math elective. It won't count as your math graduation requirement, but it is an elective. Um, students who got an 83% in Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 Accelerated can sign up for that. Um, then there is a Principles of Computer Science AP elective for students that have received an 83% in Algebra. Science options, there's three of them. Um, we'll start at the bottom on this screen. The integrated science system is for students who completed um, science eight and completed math eight and took their CDT. Now the next step up would be biology. Um, in biology as a freshman, there is a nature of science class that's a prequel to that class. Um, first semester from August till, till January, and I'll talk about the schedule here in a little bit, but students will take nature of science first semester and then take biology second semester. And to take that, the, the, you do need an 87% in science eight. And to take that biology second semester, the students do need to receive a 75% of the nature of science in the fall. Um, completion of math eight and the CDT score are prerequisites as well. And then our honors biology, accelerated biology is a little bit harder you do need, your child needs a 93% in science eight, an 80% in algebra one, and a 93% in math eight. And um, your child's school counselor and teacher should be able to help them decide whether they're ready for these courses. So we have a lot to offer at the high school. And as you get older, there are more and more options of different electives we can take. We do work on a block schedule. So it's sort of like college. Um, at the middle school, your son or daughter has maybe eight, nine classes, 40 minutes a piece. At the high school, it's twice as long and it works on a block schedule. So students will have four periods a day and um, it's broken up a little bit different where they, the classes they have in the fall from August till January, they will take finals in those classes, move on and come back in January to June, have five different classes. It's a four by four block schedule and we get creative and that some of those classes are five days, some are two days, and some are three. And I hope to explain that a little bit better later on. Um, foreign languages, we offer four, French, German, Latin, and Spanish. Spanish and French students can take all the way up to level six, level five being the AP. German and Latin go up to level five, which are AP as well. Business electives, we do have intro to business. Um, there is an online keyboarding class that students can take, which is in addition to the regular school day. And there's a computer business publications class as well that can be offered five or three days. English electives, we have theater arts that can be offered five or three. We do have a lot of technology classes, everything from intro to tech systems down through graphics and a couple different engineering classes with robotic engineering and computer animated drawing slash engineering. The intro to materials classes list, listed, that is um, half wood shop and half metal shop. So art electives, we have ceramics and fibers, jewelry and glass, drawing and painting, computer art, 
art history, and you can see in parentheses the classes that are offered every day or for three days. Um, and we do have a couple media electives open to freshmen, the elements of digital video and broadcast journalism. And all those, all these classes are listed in the course description guide. Our, our, our music department, who is awesome, uh, we have symphonic band, orchestra. If you want to learn how to play the piano, we have a piano class for three days. We have music technology, then all the choirs, and history of rock and roll, world music, and music explorations. So to kind of talk about what a schedule may or may not look like. So I have a couple different sample schedules here. So we talked about block scheduling, which I'll go into detail here in a few minutes. But the first student is an integrated science system student, not quite ready for biology, going to wait to take biology as a sophomore. So first semester, there's periods one, two, three, and four. So this student has English nine first period every day from August until January. They signed up for a technology class. They have intro to technology second period, and they'll have that every day from August till January. Third period, they have science. And then fourth period, they have Spanish two. January 17th or whenever first semester is over, comes around, they take final exams. Those classes are now over. And after a couple day break, they come back, come back for the second semester. And now they, from January all the way till June, they'll have algebra one. Health and phys ed will be mixed together. Um, you would have phys ed for three days a week for the semester and health for two days. They would kind of work in cahoots. Um, for example, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'd have phys ed and Tuesday, Thursday, health. Um, and then period three, intro to business and fourth period, um, history. So the one thing you could take notice of, we try, it doesn't always happen this way, but we try to break up English 9 and history so that the reading and writing classes are broken up and that your child has reading and writing spread out all year. And, uh, and in a perfect world, we can do that with math and science as well, where science would be for one semester and algebra would be for the other. So the bottom sample schedule is an accelerated bio student. Um, this one, biology, what makes it an accelerated class is we offer it all year long. So this student has an honors level English class first period, that intro to tech class second period, a five-day biology, the honors level accelerated biology third period, and Spanish two fourth period. Now, in January now, this student will not take a final in biology because the class will continue. They'll have geometry accelerated, the health and phys ed. Now for biology, they'll have it two days a week, similar to how I talked about the health and phys ed. They would have the biology trailer, same class, just two days a week, maybe Tuesday, Thursday, mixed with a three-day elective, such as theater arts and this one. Um, and then U.S. History 2 would be fourth period. So the way our schedule is set up, and I really, really, really hope that your eighth graders will have a normal school year next year where they can come to school and quality resource time, or it's a fancy word for homerooms, uh, QRT. So at 725, a warning bell rings, and at 730, they head off, or they should be um, checked into their QRT. So for 25 minutes on a normal school day, they have an opportunity to work on homework, seek out help from an, a, a teacher, get tutored, or sometimes just sort of gather their thoughts and get ready for the day. But the way that the school days work from period one all the way down through period four, you can see the lowdown on regu the regular school day. Um, at 9.25, first period is over. From 9.31 until 10.54, your, your student will have second period. Third period, we get creative with our lunches, depending on what class your son or daughter have will depend on what lunch they eat. But they will have a half hour lunch worked into their third period. So if they, for example, have phys ed during third period, they would go to third period from 11 o'clock all the way till 1224, get ready, get showered, get cleaned up, and then they would eat D lunch. But if they had, say, a science class during that time, they would go to the A lunch and then report to their science class all the way through. And then the B and C lunches, depending on where they are in the building, will depict what lunch they eat. We have career QRT, super QRTs. Of course, with Pittsburgh, you have snow, so there's two-hour delays and uh, some half-day um, schedules as well. But the career uh, QRTs, there's opportunities for students, especially freshmen, to go and see a someone from the community or a few people from the community will come and speak about their careers and give a presentation. 
and it gives them an opportunity to do something worthwhile with that time. And there's usually an assignment that will go towards um, their graduation project when they graduate. But those will be on specific days, not often, um, you know, maybe once a month or so. So QRT, a little different than homeroom, we call it quality resource time. I did say a little bit about these things. It's a chance to study or do homework, hopefully not doing homework from the night before, but working ahead. Um, peer tutoring, it's an opportunity to make arrangements to go get tutored by another student. We do have National Honor Society students in the building um, who do volunteer to tutor. Study sessions with teachers, it's pricelets, it's, it's a half hour every day. Check into your QRT teacher and go see your math teacher for extra help, your Spanish teacher, et cetera. Um, I like it as a counselor. It's an opportunity for us to have conferences with teachers, with parents, and with students. There's club meetings that have um, activities and um, they will meet during that time. Sports teams often will have meetings during that time. Um, and then there's AP review sessions and kids who maybe were sick and missed phys ed, it's an opportunity for them to make up for their physical education classes. Um, you'll be able to link, uh, click on our Fox Chapel activities and athletics site to see the, uh, the, the, the many, many um, sports and activities that we offer at the school. So just some schedule dates, and these are always subject to change, especially this year. But right now, some anticipated dates and some important dates. I mean, tonight obviously is March 2nd, and there will we will be headed down to Dorseyville. Now it is to be determined, but we will be going down there um, pretty soon here in March. Um, in mid-May, we would like a signed letter back to us, basically just saying that you reviewed your son or daughter's course requests and you understand what they signed up for um, so that we're on the same page. Um, Still working on some move-up days, um, opportunities for the middle school students up at the high school. I'm not sure if we'll be able to do that. Um, and then new student registration by appointment. If there's any parents that are on here um, from a private school, students would need to register. And we can do that anytime between April and June. Um, anticipated dates, freshman parent meeting at the high school, August 19th. Freshman orientation at the high school, August 20th. And the first day of school for next year is set to be August 24th. And those dates, of course, are subject to change. Um, so right now, I am going to uh, finish that up. And I don't know if Dr. Lentz is still on here. But it'd be hard to answer 100 and some questions at once. I mean, my advice to you moving forward is to work with your son or daughter's counselor at Dorseyville was setting up the appropriate classes, you know, talk to their math teacher, talk to their, their, their science teacher with the block scheduling, we can get creative. And if you feel like maybe there's a class they need to redo from this past year, they can retake that class and we can actually make up for lost time and they can do what's called doubling up. Um, and maybe they retake French one because it just wasn't the best year possible they get that clean slate, start French one, and we can actually put them in French two second semester. We don't like to double up freshmen too much. Um, we want them to enjoy their freshman year, find their lockers, learn how to access their teachers, and, and get off on the right foot and be comfortable um, instead of overwhelming them. Um, I, I also welcome any P through S parents to email me with any questions. I would love to um, Get get a chance to know you. We could do a Google Meet, um, and definitely would love to talk to you over the phone. I can speak for the other counselors. I think they would love for you to do that as well. I know tonight at seven fifteen, you're going to have an opportunity to meet with different teachers from all different um, parts of our school. And um, I don't even know if I can access the comments here, but if there's a couple questions that are kind of general and not specific to your child, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I am looking forward to having your kids at the school. Let's see. All right, where is the sheet with the breakouts? Let's put that in the chat. And Finn, I hope you got that. I know Mr. Uh, or Dr. Lentz did go over that. It is in the, actually Kelly Quackenbush, I think put that on there. So thank you. All right, is there are any specific questions for the good of the group and not for your son or daughter necessarily?
And I'm sorry it maxed out. I know Dr. Lentz was trying to, to help with that. How will scheduling be handled for kids who are completely virtual this year? Great question. That will go through the counselor at the middle school. So um, Krista, I would reach out to your son or daughter's counselor. Um, if you'd like to meet with me, I would love to do a Google meeting. I can't schedule them right now. We will meet with them later on, um, but Google meeting will definitely help with that. And Krista, if you don't have any luck later on, you can always email me and I'll take care of your son or daughter. So I will hang out for a little bit longer. I know this will be an opportunity for you to take a quick break and then go in and check out um, all the different teachers and different departments at our school. I will say this, I absolutely love Fox Chapel, it is a great place. Can I send your email here to chat? So our emails should all be on our website, but my email I will put under the chat here for the P through S's. And I'm biased, but the P through S's will be the best students in the building. Do classes fill up? We, Joe, we don't we usually do everything we possibly can to be creative, to get as many um, classes that the kids, so the kids can take. Um, so very rarely will classes fill up. Um, what I will say is though, depending on how many kids sign up for the classes will depend on how often um, they are scheduled. So English, history, math, science, your kids will get those classes. The hard part is getting the electives sometimes, especially when students take choir or music, it's hard to fit it all together. We make sure they get their academic classes first. So while it may not fill up, it may not work with your child's schedule. And as they get older, sometimes it get, we have to get more creative in how we do it. But they will get the academic classes they, they sign up for. Sometimes in the schedule, magicals or concert choir or Latin five is only offered at a certain time. And maybe at that time is the only time you can have AP computer science or the only time that you could possibly have maybe AP government. And um, we obviously give the academic class to your child first. I do like seeing a lot of P through S names on here and a lot of names I uh, recognize. Can students take art elective both semesters? They can. We want to make sure they get their academic classes and, and we want to give them a fair and um, challenging schedule without overdoing it. But if they want to take drawing and painting first semester and there's room to take ceramics second, we definitely will try to do that. Um, Simran, I did put my email address on there, it's actually two above your um, your comment. Do students get a roadmap to guide them to finish all credits? Yes, so in the course description guide, in the very back of it, and I hope you can see this because I can't see what I'm doing um, on here, there is a roadmap that's in the back of it that I like to write down all the classes when I meet with my students on here just to keep a running tally, but it's an opportunity for you um, to do that as well. Right. Can students take two math as class? Yes, students can double up. Now, once again, I, I and I'm I'm right there with you as an eighth grade parent. I'm worried about what my daughter's going to take at Chartier's Valley where I live. And we want them, I want her to take as many challenging classes as she can without overdoing it. And I will say that when the, the kids come to the high school, it is overwhelming at first. And they certainly could take like algebra one and geometry spread out over the whole year, but we do want them to experience a little bit of everything. We do want them to have fun, get involved in sports, get involved in clubs and not spend all their free time doing homework. Um, it's on an individual basis and we don't recommend it for everybody, um, but they can take two math classes. You know, actually you said same semester. So no, not same semester, but same year. Yes. You can do band and do a sport. When I coached at Fox Chapel for basketball, I used to love it when I had um, somebody in band or in choir and play sports at the same time. Am I 
make sure I got all the answers here. Do they, yes, great question. Do you still have to complete community service by the end of your junior year? Yes, you do. Um, you have to finish 12 hours by the end of your junior year. It used to be you had to do it during your junior year. Now you can do it at any point. The moment school ends in eighth grade this year, they have a, a running clock until the end of their junior year, spring of their junior year to do 12 hours. Um, when kids complain about 12 hours, I explained to them I had to do 120 at my high school. So 12 is nothing. I mean, it's a couple days to do something good for the community. And if you don't do it by the end of your junior year, it becomes 36 that they have to do their senior year. So hopefully they can all finish it by the end of their junior year. Simran, just making sure you saw my email address was listed up above your comment. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Oh, all right. No problem. So I promised Dr. Lentz that I would log out of the meeting or the presentation prior to um, everyone getting an opportunity at 715 to get hooked in. So maybe one or two more minutes. If you have another question, please speak up. You can click your mic and talk or you can type it in. I really hope we get an opportunity to meet the freshmen next year. What's the deadline for grade percentages to meet for the accelerated classes? It's a, I don't know exactly. I would think the end of the year, um, which obviously brings up the point that if you take a class now and you sign up for something, your grade may change. It may improve. It may get worse. Um, so whatever you sign up for now, Simran, if, if it changes in May or June, we can definitely make changes. Um, and I've had teachers reach out to say so-and-so did really well in the class and they meet the prerequisites for whatever honors level class. And sometimes it goes the other way that they didn't do as well. We have to take them out of a class. Does orchestra meet during the school day? Yes. So we have parts of our schedule that are set up where orchestra and choir meet during the school day. So orchestra um, might be, say, during first and third period of your options. But the way we do it as your counselor is we work it in cahoots with all of your academic classes and we make it fit. Um, they do have, of course, concerts and different things that they do after school and in the evenings. But there is an actual orchestra class during the school day where you'll practice, learn, and get a grade. It's the same for band, absolutely. So band, choir, orchestra, um, there's different times built into the day um, for you to do that. Some students will have it two days, one semester, three the other, and vice versa. Sometimes we do have to give you band every day in a semester and you don't get it the next semester. It just depends on what academic classes you want to take. No problem, Meredith. So the graduation project listed on the planning worksheet, I probably didn't talk about this as well as I could have. Um, when you take, there's, there's a list of things that the state and the school want students to do career-wise. There's different standards we have to meet. When you take that career and college essentials class, those things are taken care of. There's different, you know, going to a guest speaker, learning how to write a resume, um, a mock interview, um, learning how to fill out an application, different things that we need to meet, to have the kids meet to graduate. And that's that graduation project. We have to show it on the transcript for the state, um, but it's taken care of in those classes and just the different guest speakers and things that we do throughout their high school career. Is the industrial technology session in the high school demand tonight in high demand? Dan, I don't think it'll be in high demand. I think tonight, I, I think he tried to cut it off at 
250. I'm not sure, but I don't think it would be in high demand. Um, if, if there's something you wanted to see more of or an opportunity like that you couldn't take advantage of, I mean, just, just let us know. We'll, we'll help you out and get an answer. Is jazz band an elective? Um, we do have band and we do have orchestra. All right, people are trying to get into the Zoom meeting. All right, so I am going to log off of this. If you're on my caseload, please reach out and say hi or ask questions. If you're on um, another person's caseload, no big deal. Reach out to them, and I know they'd love to meet you and help you in whatever way they can. But good luck to you. Hope next year is a uh, normal school year, and look forward to getting to know you over the next four years.